where are all the new bikes? Every year I make new videos, new videos, new videos, and this year it's been tricky. Many of the bike companies have not released really anything, Trek especially has barely released anything new or worth really talking about other than very minor changes and very minor upgrades. We have the Slash which went to pretty much the now industry standard of a high pivot and adding an extra thing. I never even did a video on it because honestly I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Norco did it years ago, many other brands have started doing it and Trek Slash, well, it was kind of suited that it had to go that way. The previous version of the Slash had been nearly the same for a long time, like very minor changes to it all. As we look at the rest of the whole industry, it has been trapped because of COVID and slowed down and playing catch up and delays. And now the industry is probably all caught up, things are probably normalized, but the problem is they're stuck with this weird stock of bikes. They've gone in a many different directions. Trek, for example, went with the generational system, where they came out saying, we're not just going to make a new bike, we're actually keeping the old bike. But what that truly meant was they had a lot of the old bike left, and the way manufacturing works is they actually have a lot of new bikes already starting production. These were years ahead plans. And because they're already in motion to get best prices and to keep good timelines, you hope that the sales will stay the same and you'll burn through all that stock. As we all know, sales dropped a little bit, people stopped spending money, inflation, all that kind of worldwide stuff happened. And although the bike sales have been good, the industry overall is overwhelmed with bikes. Now we're seeing ads everywhere for clearance sales, end of year sales. And these are all bigger than previous years because they're trying to get rid of some bikes. They're two, three years worth of bikes inventory in their warehouses, whereas come 2020, they had no bikes whatsoever and there was a delay and there was a demand for it. Everyone overbought and now, like honestly, it's kind of serve yourself right. Why did you do that to yourself? I have no idea. You should have just bought Gentle and gone into it instead of trying to eat everyone's money. That's my personal take. I mean, everyone's doing it. The car industry is the same. Used cars are crazy priced right now, you know. It's, it's a wild thing to see empty car lots places and new cars being priced higher than new. Used cars being priced the same price they were when they were new. Like, it makes no sense. The bike industry isn't as greedy as the automobile industry. But they definitely overbit and got a lot of stock. So as we come into 2024 models, most of them will come out with either a new color change or a very, very minor change. We're seeing a lot of the Shimano Qs come onto it now. And so it's not really changing the rest of the bike, but they'll be updating specs to match pretty much what the industry has to make them match. You know, the Dior system's going away and the Altus and Tourney and all that stuff is kind of bleeding into a more simplified setup which is cues which variety of shifting options all into matching and into compatible to a degree obviously with each other to be the most optimal system i like that idea so that's really the only changes we'll be seeing over the next year as we go my prediction will be 2025 is most likely the year you'll start seeing some changes because of COVID is kind of got the the signals or the the rhythm of the industry messed up a little bit I really think that a lot of industries or a lot of bike brands are struggling to find that flow and delay releases they're trying to get everything out at the same time and it's really overwhelming for the buyer right now to even know what technically is a new bike what's an old bike what's the best choice for them so hopefully the bike industry settles out. I think over 2024, we'll see a lot of the sales continue for the older stock. The new stuff will not be on sale for the most of it, and then it'll balance out a little bit. We'll have then seen a good year of most of the newer changes existing for at least two years, although the first year they were hard to get or there'd be a lot of different options available. You're now gonna get back into it. So I don't think we'll see much for changes come 2025, but 
you will start seeing it. And 2026, I think, is when truly the big normalization of the industry. And this is probably true for the automobile and any industry, depending on how the world goes. But I think that's truly the way it's going to go. It makes logical sense. You know, they can't just get rid of 10,000 bikes overnight. These have to bleed out. They have to be removed. But you have to advertise them. You have to show them that it's worthwhile getting, which is always a hard thing to do when you're also trying to pump out new stuff. I just thought I'd make this video because I haven't been making videos. Um, people are asking about new bikes. They're also asking about old bikes. So like a lot of my questions still are on Gen 2 Trek Merlins, Gen 3 Trek Merlin, which is the option. The Roscoe, all these bikes, what bikes should I get? And most questions, which is really unusual, are about which bike should I get? And it's a two-year-old bike, essentially. They've just either changed the paint or they've changed absolutely nothing to do with it. So, going for a ride, enjoying it a little bit, trying to make some videos. We're gonna do a little more motocross stuff on here. It is a hobby I do a lot of, so it's interesting to explore that and try and develop some of that. I have tons of GoPro footage of it, so it's a pretty easy transition, and they're very similar markets. We do see a lot of transition between the mountain bike crowd and the moto crowd, so it is cool I am able to develop a little bit of that and get some views off that stuff. I do like making this YouTube stuff, so hopefully as I try and develop and build this channel a little more, maybe expand on the brands. As you may have seen, I've done some shorts basing off the giant stuff, but looking through that catalog, most of it is all the same stuff repeated over and over and over again. There's no real big change. There's nothing new to really be fancy about. But it's worth talking about for anyone who has questions. It would be nice to be one source to go to and have a pretty honest opinion on almost all the options available. Trek has always been my big go-to one. All the videos perform significantly better. But this year, apart from a new video launched right away, which was the Roscoe 6, and the Slash, they've really only had minor changes. The road bikes, you know, it's not even worth doing in my mind. They're so similar to what they were, it's hardly worth an upgrade. We are hitting a bit of a pinnacle, which I think probably makes it tricky as well as they mass produce more and more bikes. As you make them more and more efficient and better, how do you continue that train? Eventually, there will be a more optimal bike. And yeah, trends will come and go. So the enduro downhill kind of heavier, bigger bikes is popular right now. In the future, the XC crowd might come back around. People might want a faster option, something that can really roll fast. And that gravel scene grew really fast and has kind of staled off a little bit. So the industries are always changing and they're always chasing the dream of selling more. It's interesting to watch from a third party view and develop videos based around it. I try and cover as much ground as I can on these videos, but sometimes it's just pure trickiness to keep up with all this stuff. And also make the same video again and again. You know, some channels I follow, which are similar to mine, make the same Marlin video year after year. Well, the Trek Marlin 5 has been pretty much the same for three, four years now with very little changes. It's hard to continue making that same video. It's a great bike and it'll work. That's really it. It's nice that the shorts are now available, so I will be making those videos. But overall, there is no new bikes this year. I look at a lot of brands and yeah, they release a new one here and there, but there's nothing really big change. There's nothing really overall that will make a big difference in the biking industry life no one's really reinventing the wheel as we have been over the past five years bikes have changed drastically you know the 29 revolution has won we left 26 we've pretty much left 27 and a half behind the mullet options are there but you've got to be pretty die hard to want one the geometries are so efficient on the 29s now it it is the new standard and it's interesting to see the whole industry go that way. Anyway, just thought I'd come on, explain a bit. 
I know not a lot of people watch this entirety of this video, but to anyone who does, I appreciate it. Leave a comment below if you have a thought on the industry or what you think. Do you see any new bikes that are game changing coming out? I'd love to start making videos about the more obscure stuff. And we'll try and do more parts and, you know, new smaller accessories you could buy for the bike upgrades and maintenance videos as the winter months come along. Otherwise, I hope this was some clarification, some enjoyment for you. It's always good to get out and ride the bike, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, that's about it. Good luck.